felt good. <clears throat> good afternoon, everybody. Big V's here, Coach Verl's here. Give us just a minute as everybody's uh, just, we just turned on the system, so everybody's coming into the, into the meeting. I want to welcome you all to today's call and let you know that I appreciate you spending some time with us. We have a phenomenal call today. This is our client-only call, so this is our team leader call where once a month we like to get together with our team leaders, share with them some specific things that are making a big impact and a big difference in the businesses of the, of the clients that we coach. And uh, we're excited to be able to share with all of you the uh, not only great content, but also we have great uh, coaches with us today. They're going to share some insights. So uh, as everybody comes on, it looks like everybody's here. I want to just say welcome, everybody. And let me tell you a little bit about what we're doing. I have a, a funky thing on my screen that I can't get off first. So let me see if I can deal with that. Okay, there you go. So I'm Burl Workman. Uh, you know me. I'm the guy that uh, kind of put together this amazing group of people over the last uh, couple of years. And it's been really fun to watch not only the quality of the clients that we have, but to watch the quality of our coaches increase and improve. And I'm humbled to be part of such an amazing group. It's kind of fun when I really look at all the things that are being built and all of the share that's going on and how everybody's collaborating and making everything better. Uh, we just kind of sit in the middle of it and are in awe at the brilliant ideas that come out of our clients and our coaches. And so I hope that today is uh, uh, your opportunity to be in awe with me at some of the great ideas that are coming from our coaches as they're helping so many of their clients improve their lives and improve their businesses. So welcome to the call today and thank you. For, thank you for being here. Um, you all have access to all of our tools and systems. And so uh, there's a couple of things that we're going to share today that might be a little bit different or new things uh, that we want to share with you. And we'll uh, make sure that those are available to a download at the end of the webinar. So stay tuned to the very end and let's make sure that you have access uh, to that as we wrap it up. So let me introduce to you, my dear friend, you know, when we started this company, uh, one of the first calls I made was to Terry Murphy. I said, Terry, we got to start a new company and I need some help. And Terry says, oh, no big deal. Just come on out to Memphis, Tennessee, and we'll figure it out. So we sat in her office and uh, brainstormed the Buyer's Agent Mastery Program and the BAM program and what the coaching was going to look like. And she's been with me from the very beginning. Isn't that true, Terry? It sure was. It was fun. Well, Terry is a rock star. She was a rock star long before she ever met me, and she's been uh, a, a great mentor and a great advisor to this whole process. Terry's one of our master coaches, and there's only a handful of them within Workman Success System. She's been featured on uh, things like ABC and NBC and CNBC as a sales industry expert. Terry is a, was a top producing agent in Chicago for almost uh, 20, for over 20 years, listing and selling over 100 houses a year. Uh, when, when, when that was never even heard of, and she did that by herself without even having a team. She really understands uh, intentionally connecting people and really creating connections that are, that are long-term. You know, she met my youngest, my oldest child at the time, I think was eight years old when Terry first uh, met her. And it's been really interesting to watch as she's developed the relationship with my children, as well as all of our coaches and clients. Uh, Terry is a master relationship builder, and when I think of all the people who are great at relationships, I don't think of anybody that I know of that does it as well as you, Terry. Terry, I'm excited that you're here, and I appreciate you being on this webinar to share with everybody. It's always an honor to work with you, Big V. Well, you're, uh, you're awesome, and thank you for being here. And so let me also introduce to you Brooke Sines. Uh, Brooke is not only one of the most fun people that we have at Coach Training, but she runs a very, very successful business out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. And uh, with, her, with her team in Grand Rapids, it's been really fun to watch Brooke go from individual agent to running a real successful team. Uh, she's full-time with Remax of Grand Rapids. She has a strong desire to help others in real estate. And, you know, what I love about Brooke is that she is absolutely uncompromising when it comes to growing her business and providing a high level of service. And she is unwilling to do that at the expense of her children and her family. And so uh, Brooke's a great example of someone who believes you can have it all. You can have a great life and you can have a great family life and build your relationships there while you're building a successful business. And it's been fun to watch her grow both professionally and as a team leader. And what's interesting is she's done this and she's had this great growth in her business. She's also, uh, she's also taken on the role as coach. And so she's one of our senior coaches with Workman Success Systems. And so both of these successful women run their own businesses that are very successful and they find time to give back and to make a difference in the lives of other people. So to, to, to Brooke and to Terry, thanks for being here. Brooke, welcome. Thank you. I'm so honored to be here with both of you. 
we love we Excited. love that you, we love that you're here and we love this topic today and so we're going to have a little bit of a um we're going to have a, a kind of a i'm going to call it a not a loose discussion but we're, we're going to have a discussion about how to really build uh, great relationships how do we take and build a phenomenal team of people that refer business to us. Um, one of the one of the first uh, ebooks that we ever created was a book called 8651. And in the concept of 8651, uh, we had interviewed, gone out and interviewed a bunch of top agents, and we came up with a program that says, "Look, if you work with 50 people, one hour a day, and you do the right things." <coughs> Here's the measurable results you can get from that. And what we found was, is that we found that if you do the right things with this group of 50 people, that you can close as many as 86 transactions. And our first draft of the book was pretty good. And then Terry got a hold of it and she says, yeah, but you can't just give them generalities. You got to give them specifics. That's an old Zig Ziglar, isn't it, Terry? Meaningful. Yep specific and so she wrote an addendum to the back of the book which is the action plans and things that we do with our top 50 so you know i'd love to hear from both of you as we talk about building this top 50 and why don't we go to terry first and then brooke what is it um you know what's the best advice that you give to not only agents on your teams but agents you coach in developing a database and relationships that pay huge dividends well you know that's such a good question and i never thought it was difficult but it, just to set everybody with the right mindset, think about your, um, the people that you do business with and the people that you know that just know, like, and trust you and in a minute would give you a referral and they're not expecting anything. Just like when you love a restaurant or you know, love a particular product, you have no problem recommending it. The problem is, is that you're not always top of mind. And in real estate, we seem to think that we have to keep asking for referrals. And as we learn about relationships and building the community where you want to leverage the top services and the, and the top resources to the people you just know, like, and trust, it makes real good sense to not just be a realtor they recommend, but being their realtor. And that is done by nurturing a relationship. Well, everybody thinks they do. And in coaching, and I know Brooke will be able to speak to this, it can't be random. It has to be on a regular nurturing, building, connecting basis. And that's what the top 50 really does for you. And so, Brooke, define what top 50 is and, and a little bit about what that means in your team. Tell me, give me a definition of what you believe the top 50 is. Well, the top 50 for us, I mean, is the, like Terry said, the people that know, like, and trust us. And it's all about deepening those relationships. And like you, Coach Verl, it's not... 51 people, it's not 49, it's that magic number of 50 and focusing on that. And we call them our favorite people and, you know, our, our MVPs, our VIPs. And it's all about deepening the relationships and how can we consistently and constantly be doing that. Yeah, finding people are a little bit different. So when you first started um, thinking about the top 50, Brooke, what, was the, what were some of the first things that, you, uh, that came to your mind? Like, did you think, oh, this is dumb, or I already do it? Or what was going through your mind when, you first, when your first coach first told you, hey, you got to get your list of top 50, and we're going to do it at a higher level? Well, I first thought that it was going to be super easy because I love people, and I'm all about socializing with people. But then I started making that list and, and it was hard to come up with 50 people. But then I started thinking about, okay, who are people that if I don't know that well, that I want to get to know better. And so it really helped me develop deeper relationships with some of the people that I didn't already have. And some of my, uh, the parents of my kids' friends that my kids are going to their house. Why don't I know them on a deeper level? Right. And sometimes you maybe want to, you maybe uh, it's better not to know. You know I, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> when, you, when you learn too much about your, the, the, the places your kids are hanging out, you're like, ah, it was better not knowing. So yeah. the, way that we, the way we define the top 50 is it's the 50 people that are most likely to give you one referral a year. And we have, we have, our, we have all the agents that are in coaching go through and identify who those 50 people are. And so who are the 50 people most likely to give you a, a one referral? Just one. That's it. 
And so it's not like you're asking for all their business. It's, it's that you want to be at the front of their mind. So when they think of real estate, that you're included in whoever they're referring business to. And you like to be the yeah. only person. Hey, but I only need one. If I had 50 people giving me one a year, that's 50 transactions a year. I'm already needing a team. So if all we did was really did a great job at working with our top 50, um, our businesses would, would, would not only grow, but they would literally explode. And I really believe that's the case. And uh, so many of us don't do that. So why is it that you think, and uh, Brooke, I'll ask you this and I'll come back to Terry. Why do you think agents um, have such a hard time working with their friends? They'd rather, you know, follow up with leads that are online or go after strangers or put it, you know, <laughs> they'd rather work with people they don't even know. What's the deal? What's the problem there? I think it's, it's uh, what I hear from my coaching clients a lot is they don't want to bug these people that they make this list of 50 people and they don't want to feel like they're reaching out once a month and trying to, trying to bug them, but that's not what it's about. And so I hear that. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't think that, I think if you sit there and you think about excuses, you're, you should just, just do it. Like Nike says, yep. you know, if you, if you reach out and just start trying it, it's like the daily success habits tracker that we use you know, the second, if you just give yourself a couple of weeks to try it, I had a coaching client that I was focusing on last week with really diving in on her top 50. And when she started making the calls, she set three listing appointments within that first week and got her largest listing of 725,000 wow. this week from making those top 50 calls. You know, what's funny is, is that you know, you look at the $700,000 listing and let's say she sells it and doesn't get the buy side, that's still 20 grand she's going to put in her pocket. Well, had she not been working that sphere, that's 20 grand she loses. Right. And so my question is, I wonder how much uh, lost income there is in all of our businesses by not doing the activities that we know will make the biggest impact. So, you know, I, I, I guess I, what I want everybody to come away from this call with is uh, clarity that there are specific things that you can do that will move the needle on your, not only your income, but also re reduce your stress. Wouldn't you rather work with people that you like than people you don't know, Terry? Well, and it really comes down, and Brick and I talked about this because uh, we, we shared a client where just couldn't get him off the mark to figure out top 50. And I think it's because the mindset goes in with, oh, I'm going to bug these people every month till they give me a referral. And that's just not what it is. You know, you know, I'm a relationship person. You know, I love engagement. And the whole purpose of picking 50 people is not just what they're going to be able to give you. It's what you can give them. You have absolutely no problem saying, I saw the greatest movie this weekend. I want you to see it. Uh, being specific about something in their life. In the case of, of the client that we shared, it was, you know, he's a runner. He's an Ironman guy. He's a family guy. Uh, here's an article. Uh, your daughter's into horses. I mean, it, it's about purposeful relationship connection. And, and when you take away the barrier of, I'm not asking you for anything, I just want to keep you in my top 50. It's like that most valuable partner thing. Uh, you, you shop at a grocery store, you get a, a, you know, a special code so that you get the specials. Who doesn't want to be special? So when you change the mindset of the client um, to understand that you're embracing a relationship in a special way, to advance not just the connection because they like you. It's not like they don't like you. Why not? And so by structuring the 8651 book, I just found out that some people had a hard time trying to figure out how to connect with them on a monthly basis. And I really go for the absurd. I mean, today, by the way, is National Zucchini Day. I mean, I would be giving all of my top 50 a zucchini, you know, loaf of bread or a fresh zucchini. Or is something. that true? No, is it really zucchini day? It is absolutely national zucchini day. Okay, you know, so March Terry, 13th. Terry, I'm what's telling funny, you. I got to tell you some funny story. So, so literally yesterday, and uh, I have a neighbor across the street. He's the cutest old guy. And he, he and his wife have this, this house that they live in. All their kids have moved out in the backyard. They have this huge garden and he's knocking on my door and I answer the door and he goes, Oh, I'm so glad you're here. And I said, why? He says, we have too much zucchini and we can't let it go to waste. Yeah. And he's literally got buckets and buckets and buckets. Oh, yeah. I think he thinks oh. that because there's so many cars at my house, we must need some zucchini. So, <laughs> uh, you know, he's a day off, but the whole concept is zucchini well, day is solid. 
it's it's absurd. I, Nash, uh, April, you know, March thirteenth is National Potato Chip Day. I mean, these are just fun ways to say, "Hey, I'm thinking about you." Just like sending a hello card. I think the top fifty is the greatest way, not only to to let people know that you're on it and you appreciate them, that they can appreciate you. So. Brooke actually helped me with that. If somebody like Brooke said it was difficult, I went, okay, how are we going to fix this? And she's about the most <laughs> really annoyingly wonderful person on the planet. So, you know, if she can't do it, uh, we need a little help. And that's why Workman Way is to look at that, uh, that piece in the back of the 8651 book and get a few ideas. Brooke, tell us, Jeff, this is totally not prepared, but um, give us a, a snapshot of your coaching journey. So, Give us an idea where you were when you started, uh, what your business looks like today, and kind of what your how your lifestyle has changed a little bit. you mind sharing a little bit about that? And then I'm going to get back into um, some tactical things on the top 50. Sure. Yeah. Well, I started uh, coaching about a year after starting in real estate. I was traveling a lot prior to getting into real estate, and my kids started telling me, they, get it, they were getting older enough so they could talk and tell me, mom, we don't want you to leave or we don't want you to go on this trip. So that was ripping my heart out. And I said, well, I've, I've got to make a career change. And so I love people. I've always had an interest in real estate. So I just jumped in and didn't know what I was doing. I just wanted to sell houses. And so I hit the pavement running, trying to sell houses. I sold 30 homes that first year, but it wasn't running a business. I was just, I was just, selling houses. I was working my butt off nights, weekends. Um, I saw you speak, Verl, and it just, I'm an OCD, well, self-proclaimed OCD person. And when <laughs> so I <we> saw, <laughs> yeah, well, when I saw that lead tracker, I'm like, why did I not create that for myself? And the transaction tracker, I mean, just everything spoke to me. And I said, I have to have that. And so I signed up for coaching. Uh, I pretty much told my coach, who is a wonderful coach, uh, Sarah, and I said, kind of tell me what to do and I'll do it because I don't, I don't know what to do in real estate. You know, you tell me. And so I really let her take the direction and I did everything that I said I was going to do. And I listened to her. And that next year we added a couple team members. I added a full-time transaction coordinator, or actually she started part-time and has worked up to full-time pretty quickly. But that next year, uh, we got up to, I think, 75 homes sold uh, for the team. So I had done 55 that second year. And then the next year, we hit 100. And this year, we're on track to hit 200. And we're now at five agents. I have uh, four support staff. And even, I mean, getting involved in coaching and surrounded with the wonderful coaches that you have, Verl, and I mean, I get access to you and access to Terry. I mean, just wonderful, uh, intelligent people at all times. And it has just, it's changed my business. I'm not, you know, speaking of what I do with my family, um, I work maybe two nights a week or I have it on my schedule to work if I have to, but I'm home nights and weekends. I have a nine-year-old and six-year-old, as you know, and, and I'm there, I'm making dinner, we're eating breakfast together, you know, as a family in the morning, eating dinner together at night. And it's, it's changed my life. So you'd, would you say that you're working less at 200 transactions than you were at 30? <laughs> Absolutely. But I know people don't believe that. It's like, it's like, it absolutely isn't logical. <laughs> I understand. I that. didn't believe it at first either. But when you, when you get off the get off your own high horse kind of, you know, that like we've talked to Christy Buck about where, you know, people don't necessarily have to work with you, Christy. And I, I went to Christy and I said, how do you do that? How do people say, how do you tell people, I appreciate your referral, but I'm not going to work with you. And I'm not going to lie. It took, it took me talking to Christy. It took me trying it a few times and getting that language down but now I can do it in my sleep. I sit down, I have that introductory meeting and I say, you know, I'm Brooke. I'm so glad that your aunt Shirley referred me to you. I love looking at houses with her and handling her. You know, I'm so glad she's doing well. This is Adam and he's going to be the one showing you homes and he's going to be taking care of you. I'll still very much be involved in the process. And it's just all about how to set it up. And if you set up those expectations, they're, 
it's going to go the way you set it up and people are fine with that. Your clients appreciate the higher level of service that you give them because of that. I'm sorry. I'm a little passionate about this. I could keep no, going. I, but. No, I love, I love it. I just think it's really important to give you some credibility so people understand that you're, as we're talking about the top 50 and working your sphere and building your database, that this is one of the tools that you've used to help grow your business significantly. And it's actually making a difference. It's not, um, you know, pie in the sky. There's a bunch of stuff going on. We're trying to uh, literally help you be in, engaged and grow your business. And not everybody wants to sell 200 houses, but you know, wherever you are, there's another level and it's about putting the right systems and process in place. Um, Terry, what would you say the hardest part is, uh, or, you know, give me a, give me kind of a, give me kind of a roadmap to, to building your top 50 and then getting people to engage. Let's talk about that for a minute. So, you know, when people get into real estate, they go, oh, I love people and I love houses. And we know that's just going to last so long. Brooke um, just said that. Wait a minute. She just, yeah. said, she just totally said that. I know. <laughs> but, but really what happens is it's, it's work because it requires prospecting. So when you think about it, everybody gets into the business knowing that they know. They go, oh, get your wedding list or this list or whatever. These are people who know you. But I thought to myself, wait a minute, there are people that we in real estate literally support. And it's not in necessarily an organized way. So think about it. Who do you give your money to? Uh, as an example, when, uh, when I was in full, you know, full court press, my dry cleaners, Mr. Zangler, was an independent cleaners. And so I went to Mr. Z and I said, hey, how would you like to be introduced to all the people in my farm area? And so we had some reciprocity where I was able to leverage his great service at a little discount to all the people that knew me. Well, that's a value. And so you look at the people you give your money to as well or help support, contractors, landscapers, designers, stagers. Think about the hundreds of people in real estate that benefit. You're not looking for money, but you're looking to leverage services and resources because we have too much information. And as a, as a celebrity authority, as somebody who already knows, likes, and trusts you, that, that implied endorsement is terrific. So you sit down, and I always tell my clients, you know what? You're going to get stuck at about 35 people because there's going to be 35 people, and depending if you're Italian or not, how many friends you've got and family and whatever. Okay, so where do you get the other ones? And I start thinking, well, who do you love? You know, what, what companies do you give your money to and who supports you? And then you start building on that. Um, one of my favorites is to call my, my sphere of influence and say, on a scale of one to 10, how happy are you with your CPA? Trying to get people that you know are looking to be supported uh, in, a, in, a, in a friendly way makes really, really good sense. So not only think about the people that, that you like uh, and the people that like you and obviously a natural sphere of influence. And here's something I'd like to punctuate a little bit for everybody that's listening. And I think Brooke, you can subscribe to this. Sometimes your top 50 can be in two different lists. They could be a past client who's a raving fan. They could be family. Uh, they could be on your Christmas list. They could be on your, um, your special group of uh, book club people. That doesn't mean they can't be in your top 50, but the way that the metrics for top 50 is set up, is that you're looking for that one referral a year, but that doesn't mean you can't give referrals to them as well for their business. So when you think about it that way, Viral, it's a little easier to build that list, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. It's not about, um, well, for me, it's, I think it's one of the most basic principles in real estate, and that is, who are the people that you give your money to? I love that concept because there's a lot of them, and also who are the people you like? You know, I, I've decided, I don't know, I decided several years ago that if it's that hard, to have a relationship, it's probably not worth the energy. So who's the people you like? Let's hang out with people we really like, and then let's let them know they're in our top 50, and let's do some things uh, to, make it, uh, to make it work for them. So, so what have you found the biggest misnomer about the top 50? What's the hardest part that people think they have to do if they're going to build their list of top 50? What's, what's the hard part? Is that for me or for uh, Brooke? Uh, well, okay. So let's do Brooke since you just got done. What's the hard part? I think, um, I think besides people thinking, you know, if we get over them thinking that they're bugging people, um, the hard part is everyone says, well, I don't have time to call 50 people a month. And, and I think that's crazy. If you, and one of the things, and we'll see probably in the slides when we show a, a copy of my top 50 tracker, but um, I have them divided into different colors. And so the first week of the month, you know, I reach out to 12 or 13 people. In the next week of the month, I reach out to 12 or 13 people. 
And so you just have to put it in a system that shocker that I'm saying systems, but put it in a, <laughs> put it in a system that works and just make it a non-negotiable that each week you just have to reach out to these people. Or if you want to do it all at once, that's fine too. And it can be date nights, play dates, coffee, lunch. I mean, there's so many different things that people don't realize that they're already doing a lot of these things anyways, if they're people that you'd like to spend time with. Yeah, good point. So, so I, so I look, so Terry, why 50? Why isn't it your top 200? I mean, there's people that have been in business for 20 years and their database is way more than 50, 50, 50. Tell me about that number. Why is that number critical? Well, the, the metrics in the book really explain that well. And if you, uh, if you think about it, if everybody gave you, for a perfect world and everybody gave you one referral, you'd have 50 transactions. It doesn't always happen that way. Uh, some of the people are going to give you more than one and some are not going to give you any at all. It doesn't mean they don't love you. They just haven't done it. But if you had 200 or 300 or 500, it wouldn't be as intimate. This is a special little group of people that you nurture. They're in your exclusive inner circle. And that has a certain uh, charisma about it, number one. Number two, it's a purposeful meeting once a month or touch. Touch is a good word. I, I'd ask Brooke when we talked about this before, you know, is there any structure to how you do it? Well, that's where I found that most of our, our agents really needed a little bit of assistance and help and support. Brooke says, I just make sure I call 12. Well, I call it top 10. I call it uh, top 50 Tuesday and top 50 Thursday. You have to make three calls or two calls or even one, but so that you're rotating through your list. And and what kind of call is it? It's, hey, I just drove past your house. I was thinking about you. What's going on? You know, the Ford script. And we're going to go into scripts a little bit later. But at the end of the day, these are people you like. And if you don't want to talk to them, then you got the wrong people on your list. And so uh, when you look about events, and Brooke, as she mentioned, is love systems, you think about what can I do once a quarter to see 10 of them? You know, you invite 15, you have 10. Maybe you do an ice cream social. Maybe you, you do a, a breakfast and, you know, a lunch in the park, something fun that really doesn't spend. I, I have people agonizing over how to do an ice cream social. You get ice cream, settle down, <laughs> you know. You get some ice cream and you get some sprinkles, you're done. But you invite people and even if you, they don't make it, you can always add them to the next one. You can always send a, gee, I'm sorry we missed you. Here's a couple of pictures. Here's a couple of ice cream certificates for Baskin and Robbins. Be a friend. Friends can't wait to recommend friends. And that's really at the crux of the business, don't you think? That's really true. How do you identify who's worthy to be in your top 50, Brooke? I think, I mean, the people that, like you said, the people that you want to spend time with, but then of course, the people that have done business with you. So, I mean, at the end of the year, I say December 31st, or, you know, if, if you're busy planning your New Year's party, then do it the week before. But look at your top 50 list and say, okay, which of these people have given me business and at least that one referral? And if they're not giving you business, you can still invite them to your parties. You can still, you know, see them and have a relationship, but swap them out with someone else. I mean, throughout the year, no matter how many homes you sell, there are people that have become your raving fans if you're giving good business and good customer service. So add them to the list and start showing them how much they mean to you and, and uh, reciprocate, you know, and we'll talk a little bit later about different ways that, like we mentioned, that you can refer business to them too. So it's not all just one-sided. Yeah, I love that. Do you replace your top 50 or do you keep the same 50 every year? I keep the people that are sending me business. <laughs> That's exactly right. I'm just seeing if you're actually following the system. You keep the ones that give you a referral. If they don't give you a referral every year, you should, you should purge the list with people that didn't send you any business and replace it with some new people to focus on. And the goal is to have 50 people that are constantly giving you business. And what I found is, is when you're following the system, um, people don't just give you one. I mean, how many clients do you have that give you several referrals? Several. Yeah, there's a, couple, there's a couple of people that, you know, they just can't help but be your champion. They're going to refer you to a number of things. And just like you would a good restaurant or a good, you know, doctor or lawyer or whatever, it's about great referrals. And, and if you think about it being an exclusive club, if people really like you, they want to be part of that, that tribe. They want to be part of the fun. Uh, and 
you, you know, you know, Verl, you and I have seen how some of our agents will be you know, doing something top 50 and somebody say, well, well, I want to be in that. And you're like, hey, it just takes a referral year. No problem. So, you know, you, you want to make sure that you're consistently being supportive of the 50 and that they're supportive of you. And if you've reached out, reached out, reached out, and you haven't, then like Brooke said, it's time to replace them. You know, remember back in the day, Terry, when we used to do our group coaching classes and we did three, two, ones, you know, every day you got to call three past clients, prospect to you, find two new customers and then learn one new thing. And then it was, it was a result to Terry that we added another one. So it became three, two, one, one. And the extra one was give one outbound referral every week. And so you conscientiously start thinking about what's that one person that you need to send business to, whether it's the dry cleaner or the sushi place or uh, a neighborhood a grocery store or whatever, a, a, a house cleaner. There's so many people. If you made a list of 50 businesses that you'd like to give a referral to, you just give one a week out. I mean, what's the chance of you getting some of that back? It's a, it's a get by giving principle. And that's the whole foundation that the 8651 was, um, was, was built upon. It was built upon the contacting three fast clients and giving an outbound, an outbound referral. And so let's talk a little bit about uh, the process, Terry. Well, it, you know, you've got to come up with your top 50. And I think that's that three to get ready, three to get ready. And I tell people, you're not going to sit down and think of 50 people. So during the course of your day or your week, just have you know, that one special piece of paper and come up with 50 people. And those are people we just talked about, people that know, like, and trust you, could be a past client, family, friends, uh, ex-husband, whoever. And, um, and what you're looking for is to get one referral from that person a year. And, and you can talk about it. You can say, listen, I like your business so much, Mr. Z, that um, I, I'm just going to, you know, this is what I'm going to be doing to promote your business. And here's what I'm going to say. If, if somebody you know needs real estate, I'm just looking for you to refer me at least one time. Would that work for you? That's I it. found out that people needed the script on how to ask people to do that. Notice I didn't say, I'll send you referrals if you send me referrals. I just said, I no. want to leverage your business because I like it so much. And by the way, if somebody who needs some real estate services, I'd be so honored if you'd refer me. Would that work for you? Right? How would it, how would it not? So Brooke, have you ever had someone that you've had that conversation with about referring business? And have you ever had anybody say, well, no, I'm totally not interested in giving you any business. Has anybody ever, ever acted in a way that uh, made you feel uncomfortable about uh, having a reciprocal business relationship? Has that ever happened to you? No, not at all. And the funny thing is that, you know, they, they want to do that. People want to help people. And so sometimes they don't even think about it. Just like when you're showing houses and you have to say, oh, can you picture your couch here? That L-shaped couch would look wonderful. Or this is the fenced in backyard, exactly like you said you wanted. Sometimes you just have to hold people's hands and, and tell them how to act. Right. You pretty much want to help them help you and vice versa. So if you give an outbound referral like we just talked about, um, there's a law by, you know, you've read the book by Cialdini, Robert Cialdini, the, the six, uh, the power of persuasion. And that's one of the, uh, one of the tenets. And that is reciprocity. If I'm constantly, you know, nurturing you and, and helping you build your business or helping you with what you do, um, you just want to help me, I would hope. So the, hopefully you would get uh, one referral and let's just say you only got 25 referrals. That is 25 sides, right? So just stop for a second. I mean, all right, so let's just stop for a second. You're throwing numbers out of here like you're pulling them out of your hat. So you have 50 people, you give out 50 referrals, half of them respond to you, you do 25 sides. You understand that for most of the people on this call, that's a double of their business already. And so with wow. just doing the one outbound referral going from 25 to 50 sides is a pretty significant change in business. And one of the things that I really want people to understand is, is that you have, to, you have to be really intentional about this. I mean, you have to set your business up correctly so that when you start doing the activities that generate a real result, you can handle the business and continue to provide a high level of service. I think a lot of the reasons, and I was thinking about this the other day, and you can tell me if I'm, if I'm wrong, guys, but I was thinking that I think a lot of people don't do these basic fundamentals because they're afraid of what will happen in their business if they do, and they don't think they can handle it. And so what they do is they sabotage their own success. They create excuses for failure and they don't engage because they don't know if, they, I mean, they're already feeling like they're overwhelmed and busy. And so that's, that's probably 
you know, when I think about why people don't do it, another 25 sides, I mean, I call that failing up. So only half of your people give you a referral, you fail at 50%, you end up with 25 more sides. I mean, I don't know how, if the next slide gives you the math, but I'm telling you what really happens is if you've got 25 that'll give you one, Terry, there's probably 20 of those that are gonna give you two or three. And exactly. so now, now all of a sudden that 60 sides, now let's do the math on that. Let's say that your average commission's five grand. So um, six times five, that's an additional $350,000 in income. So the question I have for you is, is if you set this up correctly, you're doing the right things, you're having the touches, can you afford to have somebody come in your business and help you? Can you hire a transaction coordinator? Brooke, you talked about um, bringing on your first transaction coordinator part-time. Was that a hard thing to do for you to, to, to commit to having uh, somebody on a payroll? <laughs> Yeah, that was probably the one thing that I didn't listen to my coach on, and I 120% regret not doing it sooner. Um, but it freaked me out. I mean, to put, to be responsible for putting food on someone else's table, or to say I'm going to put someone on payroll. I mean, it's a it's a huge thing. And the only thing I regret is not doing it sooner. I mean, that person pays for themselves with how much time you have to give back to your business and do the things that, that you're good at. And I mean, even to start off for those of the, those on the call that are in a position to do that, still there are transaction coordinators out there that you can hire to handle your transactions to start off for 250, 350 per transaction that is paid at closing. And then you're still getting that help. So you're not, you know, like you say, Viral, if you're, if you don't have an admin, you are one. You're yes. doing the paperwork and your I time had, is so much more valuable. I just had a discussion with a, one of my high, high producing uh, coaching clients this morning and we figured out that she had already done 34 buyer sides and she's finally getting her second top 50 touch out. And it's because she, she didn't understand the power of having somebody help her. And so I said, that would have generated how much more money for you in your pocket? Now, trust me, I was one of the first people to have an admin a million years ago. And yeah, there is a fear. But I'll tell you what, almost immediately my business doubled because I wasn't playing admin. So I'm going to ask everybody to do something for me. Can you all find the little chat window in your, in your uh, Zoom meeting? And if you're not currently doing 60 sites a year from referrals, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to write down the number. Uh, take 60 sides times your average commission, and I want you to write down and put in the chat window how much money you're losing every year by not doing it. And so I want you to have a reality check here. Uh, I don't think people will do something because they might make more money. But if you really understand that this is lost income and money you're currently not making by not doing something as serious as what we're talking about today, it's simple, but you have to execute on it. What is the amount of money on an annual basis that you're losing, that you're taking away from your children's uh, ability to pay for college, your ability to do weddings, investment properties, retirement, the things that give you the ability to relax as you get older? Um, so I see, I see when one agent wrote in uh, 600,000, I have Ooh. Emily wrote in 300,000, uh, Brian 180,000, Pam, $1 million. I just had an Austin oh. Powers moment, $1 oh. million. <laughs> 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 I love that. Put your number in there. What's your number? There's 140 people on this call. Do the math because I've learned that you won't change behavior unless the pain of not doing it is real. And so if you put your number in there and you type it in, I want you to ask yourself, is this real? Is this real money that I'm losing? And if it is, you need to go share that money with your spouse and tell them I've been screwing up. I've been, I've been not doing the things that I need to be doing every day. And it's costing our family 450 grand. And, and, and so now you've got your, 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 your partner or your spouse or your significant other is working their tail off to make ends meet. And you're going in every day and you're pretending to work and not actually doing the things that generate real revenue. And it's time to like, if you're ready to like stop messing around and get serious this is one simple system brooke how many are there how many it's systems free. Are there? it's free yeah, There's, I'm just it to you. <laughs> yeah but i mean it's free to reach out you know this is not paid leads like these are people that you already have in your life all you have to do is reach out to them Right. So the key is, and let me just kind of rephrase what Terry and Brooke have so um, eloquently described, is that you create a list of 50 people, you make a firm commitment that you're going to do one personal touch with all 50 once a month. And that includes giving out bound referrals. 
and that you're going to track all the referrals they give you. And at the end of the year, anybody who doesn't give you a referral, there's five people that don't give you a referral. You take those five people off your list and replace them with five new. And the goal is, is to have 86 people giving you to have 50 people giving you a minimum of one transaction a year. And what happens when you follow that, and there's a bunch of touches and things that we're going to talk about next on uh, activities you can do and things you can do to stay at the front of the mind of your top 50. Uh, when you do that, uh, the, the, the numbers are staggering. And what happens is, is it gives you clarity. And so, um, Gosh, if there's a message, and there's probably several that I'd like to share, but if there's any one message with this particular webinar, it's that uh, we spend so much time looking for strangers and dealing with people that we have to work on for months and years to develop a relationship, and then we don't do anything with the relationships we already have. And it's just like, you know, every once in a while, I want to get my uh, my fake leg out of the closet and kick myself in the butt because... <laughs> I'm not doing this, the, the basic things. And so, you know, if you have one of those fake legs, maybe you should get it out. If your number is 150,000 or 375 or 650 or 300, like we're seeing on the chat board right now, um, blows my mind at the millions of dollars that agents are leaving on the table. And you know why? Because they think Zillow is going to do a better job at generating leads. And so they spend thousands and thousands of dollars giving their money to other people to generate, p generate leads. And these leads don't even know you and they don't like you. So you have to go through that whole process. So I don't mean to get on my soapbox about this, but I'm very passionate about this topic. And ladies, you guys are doing a great job of describing that. Uh, so we talked about replacing them if they didn't give you a referral. Um, Brooke or Terry, which one of you'd like to take us through the the process? Go ahead, Brooke. Okay. Uh, so if you once you identify your top fifty, you want to continue to do a personal touch, like I talked about, consistency, and and be reaching out to them at least once a month, whether it's the coffee or lunch or a play date, and schedule the next month's touch 30 days from the previous month's touch. So will you, so, will you define a personal touch? Will you define that for us? Yeah, so a personal touch is a call or getting belly to belly with someone. It's not a text message, at least in my, in my book. It's not a text message. It's not a Facebook message. I mean, it's a I care about you and I want to let you know that by reaching out or sending an article of interest or, or some sort of uh, some sort of touch and when I say schedule the next month's touch 30 days from the previous one if it if it works for you to set it up to call 12 a week or do your Tuesdays and Thursdays like Terry said do whatever system is going to work for you so just put it in your calendar and figure out how you're going to reach out to these people once a month Love, I, love, I love that. And so, Brooke, this is your tracker. Take us through how you use this. So now you all see my OCD that it's real and it's right <laughs> in front of you. Uh, so what I do for uh, each one of my top 50, I put their name in. Uh, I don't put spouses separately, so I put them together. They are one touch. And so you can see at the top, I have Tracy and Chris Bradburn. I put their address in there. And that's because if I'm sending a handwritten note, like, like the coaching talks about, the workman way, then we send a handwritten note, hey, it was great to talk to you. And their address is right here in front of you. Uh, their phone number, their email, whether you can text that number or not. So whether it's a landline or not. I also went one step further. My mom always said, Maybe if I don't make it in real estate someday or, or actually when I make it so big, I'm going to buy Hallmark stores, but I love cards and I send people cards for everything. And I know Terry, you're very similar. You always have a gift for somebody or a card. Uh, so I created a Google form and it asks for your name and birth date, your spouse's name and birth date, if applicable, your kids names and birth dates, if applicable wedding anniversary. Uh, if they're a client or a past client, I keep track of their, uh, their home anniversary, so their house anniversary. And so here, that's just my checklist of if they completed their Google form or not. And then uh, I keep track of profession. So we talk about how we want to give referrals. So before I give someone a referral, I'm going to look in here first and say, hey, is there someone off my top 50 that I can send something to first? And then, of course, the X's go through on when I've touched them each month. And I love this system. 
I've had coaching clients that put in, uh, they'll write in date night or they'll write in a D or they'll write in an L for lunch or, or type lunch. And we want to get belly to belly with these people at least once a year. And so maybe that's your way to keep track of the fact that you have met them for lunch or met them for dinner or a date night or something. So don't, for those of you, don't you also put pets in there too, Brooke? Don't you make sure if they have kids or pets? Yep. So we'll get pets birthdays and put those in there too, which is awesome. I mean, for many people that that's, that's an it. additional child. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's Brooke, a key to their heart. As you're, uh, as you're talking through this, I just I looked over in the corner of my desk and I received a package a week or so ago from uh, Terry, who's on the call with us. And what do you think this is? This is her Born to Shine birthday card. And yeah. the box is a box of uh, Memphis, Tennessee barbecue ideas and some Corky's barbecue sauce. And she knows that I love barbecue and I bought it myself a smoker for Christmas. And so she took the top 50, made a note of it and actually is practicing what you preach. You know, I can receive a lot of things or great ideas, but if you send me stuff how to make better barbecue, <laughs> friends for life, it's <laughs> over, game over. <laughs> and so it's yep. fun to see it actually work. And, you know, you're both so good at these relationships. This is a, uh, I, I changed the screen on you, Brooke. And so this is a continuation of that. Uh, I'm looking at your, I'm looking at your, uh, this spreadsheet right here and you've got your top 50 list, but you've got a bunch of tabs on the bottom. What are the tabs on the bottom? So the tabs on the bottom are all of my team members and them reaching out to their top 50. So there, I did not, believe it or not, I did not say you have to do it the same way I do because everyone has a little different personality and style. So uh, Darren, this is Darren's top 50. He happens to be an engineer and loved the fact that I had it the way, or used to be an engineer and had, loved the fact that I had it the way I did. So he copied that same way with the address, the phone number, he also sends out a coffee gift card. So he has a card that just says, hey, I hope you're doing well, have a coffee on me and sends out a $5 gift card and does, uh, I forget, I think he does about five a month. And so this is where he's keeping track with the X there that he sent that out to them. So wait, 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 wait. This is like, this is gonna be very foreign for a lot of people that have teams. You mean to tell me, that you expect your team members to actually generate some of their own business? You don't just give them all the leads? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I expect them to do everything that I do. And this is, I mean, they're seeing this year, we sat down as a team and said, we are going to follow the 8651. And so we have been very intentional about working our top 50 this year. We want those 86 transactions. I mean, we've gotten 57 transactions so far total uh, for the team, and we're, we're still working that list. And so it's amazing to me the ideas that the team members come up with as well. But I think if we all, it, if we all do it together and decide to do it together, then it's not me pointing my finger, Verl. We're all deciding to do it together and making that decision. Yeah, I love that. You know, you can't make them do anything, but you can certainly create an environment that makes them want to be part of it. And when you create that environment and the agents step through that door, it changes their um, attitude from an attitude of entitlement to one that, hey, we're working in this together. When we get a new listing, everybody wins. We get a buyer, everybody wins. And if we all bring it in from all of us, then our market share increases and everybody wants to do business with our team because of the amazing experiences that we create. So uh, I love that. I love that. Terry, real quick. Um, so I, as we're talking through this, I get excited listening to you guys and talking, and I'm not doing a very good job at advancing the slides. And so, you know, we, we've got 10 minutes left. So I want you to kind of go through and let's just kind of go back and forth and talk about uh, what we're looking at here, Terry, on the screen. And well, then go ahead. Yeah, I, well, it, for one of my clients who's a little schizophrenic, I wanted to put the top 50 as part of how she started and what she would do uh, just to keep track of it as part of our agile because yeah. the Agile is the only way to, to keep everything in front of her. So not everybody has to do that. We have separate uh, top 50. I really think that Brooke took it to a new level when she put in their profession, because by putting in the profession, you can be a whole lot more. Um, the, the concept is what I call giftology. It's not a referral. And so, so somebody gives you a $500,000 referral and you give them a gift card. Well, 
um, right. I don't I don't like that tit for tat kind of thing. And there's a great book out called Giftology, and it talks about how by recognizing people separately away from that, here's a referral for you, even though you say thank you, uh, really has more power because it's so much more authentic. So I just had to book that in there so that she knew what I was doing. And then Brooke came up with her great stuff. So uh, she made us all look pale after that. But if you go to her, her the slide that she has, uh, a couple of the slides that she has after that, uh, you'll see how intentional, uh, this is what it starts off looking like. And I think a lot of our agents, uh, don't realize that they can customize this a little bit to suit themselves. Uh, I personally want to see uh, what they've done that month. So I added a, a section that said, this was our ice cream social month. This was our wine and cheese month. This was our St. Patrick's Day month. And then, and then when you go back next year, you, you can see what worked, uh, Brooke, right? And what didn't. Yeah, next absolutely. Year. Yeah. So when you when you're looking through the trackers, so uh, who what is the what is the yellow highlight versus the white? What are we doing? Does that mean we've made contact or to, whose tracker is this? Um, I I think this is one that uh, that um, Chet had put in. Uh, some people I th I think the purpose of this was to show that that some people have their own system for knowing whom they called and whom they didn't or who who was up for that that week or that month. Uh, again, I think the, the biggest challenge, and you brought it up earlier, Verl, was we don't want to look like we're harassing them, right? Uh, but the most important thing I saw, and maybe you see this with your coaching clients, uh, Brooke, is that they don't record who gave them the referral. They don't track. We get lots of referrals, but when they specifically come from your top 50, remember, you're rewarding your inner circle. You are recognizing your inner circle. And you think about how many referrals you give your lender or a at closing attorney or whatever, you want to keep track of that. Uh, again, you don't, you know, you can do whatever you want with the, the small thank you, but at the end of the day, you want to really let them know how, how deeply uh, appreciative you are of doing business with them. So keep track of whom you got from whom so that you can do all of the thanking appropriately. So Brooke, let me ask you a question. Do you, when somebody gives you a referral, do you only send them a thank you or a gift card if that referral turns into business? Tell me what your referral practices what's your best practice there no you have to do it immediately I mean sometimes the the referral you know the person referring doesn't know if they're if they're able to apply for a mortgage or if they're pre-approved and so you want to teach them that keep sending me referrals I really appreciate it and I'll take good care of them and so sometimes it takes six months and you send a gift card six months later or you send a gift, they're going to be like, what is this for? Right. And the other thing that, that I love to tell my coaching clients on the top 50 tracker with the referral is that I don't just put my top 50 referrals in there. I put in everybody that sends me a referral for the whole year because then it makes it easier at the end of the year when you're revising that top 50 list. And you say, okay, these people aren't on my top 50, but look at how many referrals they sent me. And you right. easily, Great. you know who to go to. Great idea. I love that. So that's a key point is, is that when a referral comes in, whether they are, are qualified or not, send the same thank you as if they're buying a million dollar mansion. Make exactly. sure you take care of the people that are sending you business. Uh, Terry, you went through and really worked through what to do on a month by month basis. And we've created kind of a uh, optional activities that you can do in the top 50 tracker. Give me the quick overview of what this does. Well, it depends on your area and the level of um, it, what, what's germane to your, your tribe. So as an example, uh, I found out in California, somebody wasn't going to go through LA traffic for a pie. Great. But uh, I, felt, I felt that our agents needed a little boost on ideas on what to do for every month. And it also helped them with their uh, agile so they could plan it out. But essentially, you just want to have some meaningful touch and like Brooks uh, said, face-to-face -face at least, so that you can keep them in that inner circle and keep it alive. So whether it's pies or uh, help, uh, you know, a community event, uh, I would like for you to, to have time to show how uh, Brooke does the birthday thing. I thought that was really special. And whether you do it for just your top 50, but especially for your top 50, because we've got a cute little video of a thank you that I think would really make people understand the power of what she does. Okay, but, we'll get there. We'll yeah, Never Eat Alone is a great book by Keith Ferrazzi uh, about you, you're going to eat lunch usually during the day. So how about inviting one of your top 50 every other week? Makes sense. 
Absolutely. And this is a this is a sales tracker. So one of the things that we do is we track people that give us business, people that send it out, where the business comes from, the value of that lead or the commission that comes in. This is a commission tracker. Um, I, don't, I don't know if this is one of ours. Is this, is this yours, Brooke, or is it one of our clients? It's no, not, I think it's another client. Yes, yeah, a client. Okay. Because I was going to say you're off to you're at nine, if you're at nine twenty one year to date that means we're going to bust seven figures, which I which is a which is a milestone that when you hit that for the first time it's really cool. I know you're close, and so if you're not there now you will be very very soon. Um, uh, Brooke talked about for every call send a note, so I want to reemphasize that. And then you know you you can't just tell them that you'd like them to refer you business, Terry. You have to teach them how to give you business. What do you do to teach them how to give you business? Well, I mean, you, again, you, you, it's, you never want to look like I'm going to help, you know, you back and forth. So you want to say, look, you know, I had, I'm so honored to work with you and your family. I'll bet, you know, somebody that I could handle just as, as carefully. Uh, is there anybody that you know that I can help just like I helped you? Love that. Say no. You know, and I'll take it a step further and I'll say, don't just give them my number, but also give me a call. Let me know you've given my number to someone so I can right. follow up with them and give them the same kind of service that I've come to expect. And so we Excellent. teach them how to give you it. That's a, that's a direct quote out of a Dave Beeson letter. There you so, go. You know, Dave Beeson wrote a program called Goldmine Referrals, and he teaches people how to give you referrals. And that's part of the series and how they follow up. Um, how important when you, so you got your prospect looking for new business. Do you also block Brooke with your team time for calling your top 50 as a separate block? Yeah, we block everything. So every Wednesday at 1030, we meet as a team for 30 minutes and we do role play together. And it's all about, you know, tell us what objections you had over this past weekend at an open house or what did you have over calling last week? And so we can go through that. And then from 11 o'clock until noon, we follow up and we call. I mean, the plan is just to meet Wednesdays. So the team doesn't have to know we're calling our, our B leads or we're calling our C leads or our sphere of influence or our top 50. They just know to meet me there at 1030. We go through the role play. And then at 11, I say, okay, now we're, meet, now we're gonna break and we're gonna call our top 50. Or now we're gonna break and we're gonna call our B leads because it's the week of the first or it's the week of the 15th. That's so cool. And what you're looking at is you're looking at a, this is one of our tools called the Perfect Week Scheduler, which is basically a time blocking tool that we use with all of our teams to teach them how to intentionally create the days that they want so they can get into things that are critical and create that culture of productivity that needs to exist if you're going to run a successful seven-figure team. Uh, most people just go in and they let the day dictate what happens as opposed to saying, here's when I'm going to do the important things. Uh, is there a day that goes by in your office, Brooke, that you guys don't prospect? Uh, there shouldn't be. <laughs> there better not be. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. And even if it's only for an hour a day, we just always prospect. I think that's a critical thing. And she, you're looking at a, a perfect week schedule that helps you do that. Um, Terry, the, uh, you know, you've got, when you look at your uh, perfect week and you intentionally do it, uh, how does the daily success tracker of what you actually did, how do you use those two tools together? Well, you know, a success is not a silver bullet. It's a succession of tiny steps that get you to your goal. And this is where we get a lot of pushback because people don't want to be accountable for what happens during a day. But if you don't block that time, and I tell them, look, you've got the appointments on your calendar. If you've got a buyer appointment, block that time out. You've got a seller appointment, block it out. You've got, you know, you're picking up your kid at four o'clock, block it out. But then you spot that, that time that you can really spend focus time. It's about focus, not, not dilution. So if you're really focused on putting it down every day, when you do my perfect week and you know, your prospecting's on Wednesdays, Wednesdays, you said, like you said, at 10 o'clock, then you just, it's done. It's there. And you, schedule around it. You'd be surprised how the universe helps you out with that. If you schedule the time off, you can work around it. I like to say there's no emergencies in real estate. Brooke, how, how, and by the way, for everybody that's on the call and I'm showing all these tools, I showed you a slide at the very beginning. At the end of the webinar today, just stay on and I'll give you a website where you can go in and we're going to give you a bunch of these tools, the perfect week, the 8651 ebook, the trackers. We're going to give you a bunch of these tools just because uh, you're on the call today. We've learned that if we, if we give away stuff free that the, the clients who really want the help eventually will raise their hand and they'll come into coaching with us. And that's the purpose of the call is to share with you what really works. And if you feel like you need some help, then you set up a coaching consult and we'll talk to you and see if there's a fit. Uh, we're, a, we're a not very hard 
hard or uh, pushy sales group, but we do want to give you great value. And if this is good and you feel like there's more and you'd like to accomplish more, set up a free business consult with one of our consultants. Uh, Brooke, how important has this single tool, the Daily Success Habits Tracker, what kind of an impact has that made on your business and the team? Just this single tool, just using this. I mean, this is probably one of the most important tools to your business. And when, when the team, uh, when we first incorporated this, they were getting, they were looking at it and saying, okay, I'm getting five points. And, and I'm saying exactly, because if you look at it and you want to focus on making and doing money making activities. And the other day, I mean, I got home, it was a coaching day for me. I mean, I had a full day and I got home and I, made dinner, I put the kids to bed and I told my husband, I said, hubby, I am working tonight. You know, I've got some stuff to do because I didn't hit my 61 points and I'm not going on to my daily huddle tomorrow morning. I inspect what I expect and I lead by example and I'm not going on to my daily huddle the next morning and telling my team that I got zero points. So I sat there and I sent out networking emails to meet people uh, associated with the Women's Council of Realtors. And I sent out emails. I couldn't make phone calls at 10 o'clock at night or they wouldn't like, they wouldn't appreciate that. But I hit my 61 points. So at the daily huddle the next morning, I could tell my team I did that. I love that. And you said the very, uh, some very important things. Lead by example, do the activities you're telling them to do. And it's not always easy, but you make the commitment that you fall through the commit you make to yourself. So I'm going to skip past the apology script. And we've included some scripts and things that we use. The four dialogue is learning how to really develop deep relationships. If you ask my 13-year-old what to do when he goes into a room of strangers, he'll tell you, Ford. And he knows that he's got to go meet as many people as he can and ask them about their family, their occupation, what they do for fun and what they're going to do, what, what, what's their big dream, what's coming up next. And so, you know, I believe that these scripts aren't something that are just great for realtors. This is just good for general conversation and being genuinely interested in people. Um, we did a uh, we did a class recently. I actually was, I taught a Sunday school class and I was teaching the kids about how important it is that they engage with other kids because you don't know who's sitting in a classroom or who's sitting on the side that's contemplating suicide. There's this huge epidemic in the country right now with these young people that are they're confused about their gender. They're they're odd. They're a little bit different than what their parents expected. There's all this pressure for them to be these high achievers. And as a result of that, there's a high likelihood that they're at some point going to have dark thoughts. And so, you know, just teaching kids how to do Ford and say, hey, what's up? You look good today. How's your family doing? And you have an, in, have an engagement uh, makes a big difference or a big impact. This is not a sell script. This is a life script for helping people engage. Um, Brooke, you've got some fun ways to connect. Share with us a couple of those. Let's play a video. Yeah, so this example here is just birthday cards and it shows for adults, we, we create each year, we create one for males, one for females, and one for kids. And I've always, like I said, I send out cards all the time. I love cards. We used to just send out the birthday cards and the, and the kids' birthday cards uh, for the first year I was, or the first year I got into coaching and I started realizing that I should be doing this. And no one no one ever, maybe a few people sent me a thank you and said, hey, thanks for the birthday card. Thanks for remembering. And so this year I said, I'm going to step it up a notch and we're going to send a crisp $1 bill in the kids' birthday cards because what kid does not want to receive a dollar bill? Uh, it's just as good as sending 50. And then uh. sending the, sending a, well, for kids, <laughs> my kids it's get a true. check for $25 and they're more excited about the $1 bill because they know what that is. Um, so, but then also, which I have some, some things to teach them, but then with the, the male and the female cards, we send a $1 scratch off lotto ticket. So it's a dollar and uh, the amount of calls and Facebook messages, posts on my page, uh, everything that people you know, these cards are all set to go. We have them printed at the beginning, of the beginning of the year. So we change the design each year. Uh, my team sets them, gets them all ready to go. So here are a couple, here's an example here sitting right next to me, that it's all addressed, it's stamped, it's ready to go. It says what date it needs to be sent out. So all I need to do is open the card like you see it there, so cool. sign my name, and we put a stamp on it and out it goes. 
And so I want to play, I want to play this video. Is this from a client or to set this up for me, Brooke? Yeah, so this is a client's son, a past client, but also one of my top 50. And she sent me this video of her son saying thank you for his $1 bill. I think the audio <laughs> may not be working, but. Oh, he says thank you for the one buck and a card. Sorry you couldn't hear that. What a cute kid. Yeah, it was darling. Yeah. Well, I'll, let me let me just tell you what he said. He said, "Thank you," and I hear the mom in the back for the one buck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you hear the mom in the back, <laughs> the dollar, and the great card. And I think that's a great uh, that's a great that's a it's a great thing and cool. What a great mom for recognizing that you've done that. And uh, so, Brooke, what are we looking at here? Yeah, that just that, those things are are priceless. This here was just another card that I just got a couple of days ago, and it's a client that. I noticed that uh, they had just had a, another baby. And so we sent them a baby gift and, and she said, you know, thanks so much. Your gift was unexpected and greatly appreciated. And thank you. The key is here. What I loved is this last sentence. Thank you for always thinking of our family. And that's what they know. They get birthday cards from me. They get the house anniversary, the anniversary, you know, their other kids' birthday cards. So that meant a lot to me. Is there any way they do business with anybody else ever? Absolutely not. Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing what happens when you use that, what we call giftology, to be so personal. And it was so good of you to do that. And when I interviewed Mark Ryan and uh, Lee Tessier for our Riz Media, which was earlier uh, in the month, uh, they do some silly fun things. Uh, Mark loves Margarita Day, you know, Cinco de Mayo, and he puts together a little package for his top 50. Uh, this one was specifically on strategic partnerships. Uh, and, and he also, in the same picture, had, uh, had some things he did. Movie night's a great thing for uh, a top 50 where you get everybody together. They won't all come. But I think uh, Brooke had a really good one with the bakery. Uh, Brooke, why don't you tell him about what you do with the bakery? Because that one was very... Um, painless and seamless. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, I think that's on the next, uh, the next slide, Verl. But what I do is we send out a Valentine's Day card to all of our clients. And we just include a small coupon from the bakery that's valid for one free cupcake or one free cookie. So they get to choose their preference. And the bakery supplies those cards to us for free. We pay and design the Valentine's Day card and address those but we only pay for the cupcake and cookie gift cards that are turned in. So when they get turned in, the staff member knows to write the person, the client's or top 50 name on the back so we can keep track of who actually used it. But again, people post on social media and send us texts and, and everything wishing us a happy Valentine's Day and saying thank you so much. And so that's an example of someone posting, saying thank you. and what the coupon looked like. And it has us next, on there. Compliments of Grand slide, Allure. You actually meant go to the next slide. I totally missed that. <laughs> Sorry, Brooke. That's okay, you see, <laughs> you see how beautifully um, that, that Brooke leveraged the bakery directly to her sphere of influence? Small businesses are desperately looking for that target marketing, and it's a win-win for everybody. So good for you, Brooke. Love the Yeah, I the key was having that expiration date, too. So oh, yeah. People 30 days. knew when to get that done. Yep. So you can do anything, burgers and brews, go to your favorite restaurant, find out what their day is. Uh, obviously, we do the whole pie thing. Here's Lee Tessier's way to get referrals from that. Uh, he puts a little tag on it that he does with his lender. Here, here what, what does Verl like to say? Everything works, nothing doesn't. Just do it. Just do it. And you can do all kinds of things, especially with if you get it working with other um, strategic partners, your, you know, your lender. Uh, your, your local credit advisors, just do, do something to see the people. I think that's what we really need to emphasize here because it's really hey, all about Brooke, engagement. Hey, Brooke, are you watching Terry? She is such a pro. You know, she knows that we're way over and I'm going through slides and she's just like <laughs> clicking along as I flip the slides and filling it in. Terry, it's fun working with you. It's like, a, it's like I, can't, I can't help but smile. Um, I've had people on the message board on the chat line say best webinar of the year. Thank you for sharing this with me. Uh, my favorite one was from Robert Allen Paul in Minneapolis that said to Brooke, hey, thanks for your client list. Uh, send, him a, send him a coffee card for me. Uh, we, don't, we don't have time for questions on this one, but let me encourage all of you to go to workmansuccess.com forward slash 86 in 12. 
That's 86 in 12. That's 86 transactions in the next 12 months working with your top 50. And when you go to that website, uh, you'll be able to download the My Perfect Week schedule that we use. And this is all stuff we use with our private clients. The top 50 tracker, the 8651 book, you can take a free disc and, um, and you'll also get a free business consultation. If uh, you're already a coaching client, then of course you have access to all of these things already. Don't, you don't need to download them again, but you're welcome to. And then your coach will work with you on setting the things up moving forward. So I just want to thank Brooke and, and uh, Terry for being here. You guys are awesome. We could talk for two or three hours and we would never run out of time or energy from either one of you. Uh, what you're doing in your businesses is phenomenal. And what I love the most is your willingness to share. So thank you so much for just laying it out there and saying, this is what works. This is what we do. And uh, on behalf of all of us at Workman Success, we're honored to have you be part of our family. Everybody, thanks for being here. We will talk to you all soon. Be around next month's webinar. Uh, get ready for a crazy fall because it's fall selling season. Let's crank it up a notch. Talk to you all soon. Bye-bye now.